Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers in Christ, we all make mistakes, right? We also make decisions and choices each and every day of our lives. And so I have a question for you. Who do you listen to when you have a choice to make? Do you listen to that inner voice in your head? Or maybe that voice in your heart when deciding the right thing for you to do? Or maybe you listen to someone else and let them help you to make your choices. Regardless of how we come to our decisions, we reap what we sow. And at the end of the day, though, no matter who or what we listen to, our decisions, our choices may either reward us or humble us. Let me share a story about listening with you. While giving a speech at Smith College, the speaker related a life lesson that she had learned during her time as a student. She was studying geology and while on a field trip, saw a large turtle that had dragged itself out of the Connecticut River, up a couple of embankments, and was now on a direct path towards the road. Fearful for the turtle, she turned it around and hauled a now very angry turtle back to the river. It was at this point that her geology professor came by and informed her that the turtle had probably spent weeks of exhausting effort getting up those embankments, and now, just as it was near to its nesting spot, she has turned it around. The life lessons that she said, she said, I realized that this was the most important political lesson I learned, one that cautioned me about the authoritarian impulse of both left and right, always ask the turtle. Politics aside, she listened to her heart. Her professor who knew what the turtle was doing could have helped her to make a better decision, but only if she has asked and listened. I believe that listening is an art, sometimes very difficult to do, and sometimes we criticize what we don't like or understand. You may not understand when why you are nice to someone and they're not nice back to you. You may get frustrated at school when teachers are teaching you a lesson and then you don't understand. Or you might not like what your parents have to say, especially when they end it with, it's for your own good. That always irritated me. <laughs> Even at work, our boss gives us direction that they want us to take even if it contradicts our better judgment. We see a similar practice in our first reading. Paul and Barnabas traveled 120 miles from Perga to Antioch to preach the grace of God. And because the crowds were embracing them, 
the Jews became jealous and rejected them. However, the Gentiles listened to the words that Paul and Barnabas had to say to the point of joyful acceptance. Paul and Barnabas were kicked out of Antioch by the Jews. However, they left with joy in their hearts and the Holy Spirit for the love that he shared among those who would listen to them. Have you ever felt that kind of joy, that love of God, when you know that in your heart that God had a part in something that happened to you? That feeling could be that same joy, that Holy Spirit that Paul and Barnabas felt. I believe that joy, that love, or grace, if you will, of God, in those moments in our lives, is what John was alluding to in our second reading today. You see, that feeling is part and parcel to a glimpse of heaven that John shares. He shares with us the reward of martyrs. They were being led to life-giving waters by who? By Jesus, who shepherds them. These martyred men and women, during their lives, listened to Jesus. And now, he wipes away every tear from their eyes, shelters them. They will no longer be hungry, thirsty, and feel no heat from the sun. Martyrs are survivors of faith, of our faith. And regardless of the adversity and the challenge that they faced in life, they trusted in Jesus. We are survivors of our faith if we listen and trust in Jesus also. We too can expect to enjoy the eternal springs of life-giving waters, and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. That, my sisters and brothers, is true love. A joy, a love that may provide a glimpse of heaven each time, each time that we listen to Jesus. We look at martyrs, St. Stephen, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Joan of Arc, St. Maximilian Kolbe, and of course, Jesus Christ himself. All followed with faithful hearts and minds that believe that they will never perish. They will become one, one with Jesus, one with God. That is what John shares with us in the gospel. We listen and we follow Jesus. We become one with him. What blocks you from hearing Jesus? Are our lives so busy and complicated with work, with sports and life situations? Are we going to allow these things to take precedence over listening and following Jesus? We may have experienced a tragedy in our lives, a tragedy that may have caused us to be angry with God. Let him know you're angry with him. He wants to be in every aspect of your life. I often get asked if I could pray for something good. I respond absolutely right, yes. Because Jesus wants to be a part of every aspect of your life, the good and the not so good. And as Jesus said to Thomas, don't be unbelieving, but believe in me. There are other people who guide us in our lives that we honor this weekend. We celebrate all mothers on this Mother's Day, those who are mothers and those who act as mothers to others. Now, I have preached before on my, the role that my mother had in my life, in my spiritual life. By her example of sharing morning prayers, even though I didn't understand then, I now know that she helped lay a foundation of faith in me. And now eventually, I now understand the importance of prayer in my life. 
Sometimes we look for crutches to help us. Growing up in the 50s and the 60s, our parents relied on Dr. Spock, a pediatrician who's, who wrote a book on baby and child care. There was also newspaper columnists, Dear Abby and Ann Landers, sisters who wrote advice on anything and everything that was acknowledged as practical advice with a moral awareness. Mothers can be a true guiding light. They give us love and protection as best they can. And although there is only one perfect mother, our blessed mother Mary, the example of Mary's life can be for us a foundation of courage and selflessness when making the decisions to help us to persevere through the challenges in our lives, as she has, and to enjoy the good things that we are blessed with, as she now resides with her son. Remember, we can always pray to Mary to take our prayers to Jesus. And lastly, I'd like you this week to think about times in your life when you had to make a decision. Who did you listen to? Did you take the easy way out and take the path of least resistance? Did you pray for assistance? And how did it work out? Let me share some advice. Pay attention to the one who simply asks for you to listen and follow him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Let Jesus be a part of your decisions and choices and lead you to the springs of life-giving water just as he leads his flock. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. May God bless you.